Good morning. We, we have a lively, a lively crowd this morning. Welcome to the Community Church of Glenrock. It's wonderful to have you here with us worshiping today. Uh, a few announcements that I would like to make. First of all, I would just like to thank, uh, thank Jake Lloyd for being here today. Janet's not in today, obviously, and Jake is going to be playing the service today. Jake, thank you for sharing your gifts and your talents with us this day, this morning. Um, a, a few announcements. One, I'd like to let everybody know that next Sunday, the children and youth are going to be walking through the sanctuary during the children's message hour or message moment, I should say. Uh, they're going to be walking through the congregation making a collection for Crop Walk. For those of you that are not familiar with Crop Walk, it's an organization um, organized or, or uh, set up by Church World Services. And what it does is it, it aims to eradicate hunger in the world. And, and what they do is, is there's a, a walk that, uh, that people sponsor the walk or make donations towards the, the crop walk. And those donations partly go to international uh, food uh, sources and also go to local outreaches as well. So a great cause, and uh, just to let you know that next Sunday the children will be collecting for Crop Walk. Um, a reminder for those of you who have not seen it either in the paper or in the uh, currents or anywhere else, that we are going to be having a parenting class on Sunday October 25th, after the service, about 11.30 a.m., a colleague of mine, an uh, exceptionally gifted uh, man in uh, the field of uh, family counseling, children and, and youth counseling, is going to be coming in to talk with parents, and the topic of discussion will be talking in a way that your children will listen and listening in a way that your children will talk. So if you know anybody that has children that would like to come out for this, it's free. It's going to take place in room 205 in the Education Building at 1130. Don't forget, please, the guest books that are in each pew. If you are a member here of the church and you have a particular need, fill, fill one of the slips out, put it in the offering plate as it's passed, and if you're new to this church, please fill one out so that we could get to know you better as well. A reminder also that I will be away uh, next Sunday, October 18th. Uh, the Reverend Mel Van Haddam will be preaching. I will be back in the services beginning the following Sunday, the uh, 25th. One last reminder, and that is... It, if you are looking for a church home and do not have a home at this time, church-wise, consider becoming a member of the Community Church of Glenrock. This is a vibrant and exciting church community. There's a lot to get involved with, a lot to do. We'd love to have you be a part of this community. The way you get started is see myself or one of the uh, one of the consistory members after the service will get you pointed in the right direction. And now let us continue with our worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Now is the moment of grace. This is the hour of blessing. Here is the path to new life. For this is the day that God is making. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ.
Please be seated, and won't you join me in the prayer of confession, which can be found in your bulletin. Gracious God, you made us to be neighbors, members of one family, blessed with great diversity. You created us to be helpers and friends to one another, entrusting to us your gift of giving and your joy. Yet often we deny those gifts, creating division, lost opportunities, and the absence of hope. In so many ways, we break each other's hearts. Still, you do not reject us. Restore us to each other and to you, O God, mending our hearts and repairing the world. In your beautiful name we pray. Amen. Through the power of the Spirit of God, you shape us to be for others what Christ is for us, pardon and peace, new life and blessing. We give you thanks for your love, your forgiveness, and your constant presence. Amen. And what is it that we are told? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these.
The peace of Christ be with you. Let us give to one another now by sharing the sign of peace. At this time, I'd like to invite all the children up to the chancel for the children's message. Come on up, everybody. Anyone else? There we go. I know there's at least a couple more. How's everybody doing today? Pretty good? That's good. Pretty amazing. Well, that's excellent. I'm glad to hear that. We all like to feel amazing. Well, I have a question for all of you. How many of you, show of hands, how many of you collect things at home? 
okay? What are some of the things that you collect? Anybody? Just call them right out. Anything in particular? I'm going to help you out maybe just a little bit. Oh, go ahead. You collect diaries? Okay, well, that's a lot of writing that you must be doing then. Good for you. How many of you, by any chance, collect mm, baseball cards? Okay. How many of you collect um, dolls, maybe? Okay, I, I figure it's probably so. How many of you collect stuffed animals? And a lot of you collect stuffed animals. Well, you know what? That's not unusual. We all collect things in, in life. I know I remember my daughter, Caitlin, who's 12. I remember her collecting the quarters from each of the states in the United States. And it's not complete. Maybe it's worth somewhere around $9.50 at this time. But some things are very, very valuable. Some things like stamp collections or rare paintings can be really valuable. And other things like photographs are not very valuable, but they mean a lot to us because, because we remember all the times when those pictures were taken. And God warns us today, God warns us today about uh, collecting treasures here on earth because... After all, they don't last forever. What, what happens? Somebody could, somebody could break in. Oh, come on up. There we go. Late arrivals. Yes, I love it. Come on over this way. So they, uh, the, the treasures on earth don't last. Somebody could break into my house and steal the coin collection. Maybe a, a water pipe breaks and, and soaks the, the baseball cards or the stuffed animals and they're no good anymore. Well, God says rather than collecting treasures here on earth, that we should collect treasures in heaven. How do you think we might collect treasures in heaven? You collect things that you never knew about having, okay? Anyone else? Go ahead. Collect any animal up there. Oh, that's going to be hard, but... Uh, they're they're going to be loyal up there. Well, okay. Well, one of the things that we can do is that we can obey God. God wants us to obey God. And we can, we can help out others. Because when we help out others in our life, we're helping out God. And the other thing that we can do is we can go to church like you are today, all of you here at church, right? Those are just some of the things that we can do in order to have treasures in heaven. And you know what Jesus says? Wherever your treasures are, that's where your heart will be. So if your treasure is in heaven, that's where your heart will be, in heaven. And that's a pretty good place to be. Let's bow our heads and say a quick prayer. Loving God, we thank you for your presence in our lives. Help us always, help us always to, to collect treasures in heaven to live our lives the way that you would like us to live them. We ask these things in your beautiful and precious name. Amen. And the people all said, You are God's beloved child. With you, God is well pleased. All right, everybody, off you go.
please be seated. As you may or may not know, today marks the beginning of our stewardship month, where we look at, at taking care of the needs of, of this church in our lives. And with that, each Sunday we are going to be having for four Sundays, today, the 25th, the 1st of November, and the 8th of November, we're going to have a lay speaker come up and, and share just a little bit about their story, what the church means to them, and how they've been able to give back to the life of this church. And so it gives me great pleasure to invite Victor Hart up to share his story with us. Victor? Good morning. Thank you. Pastor Terry called me the other night and asked me, could you come and say a few words about what the church means to you and, and how do you give back? So when I thought about it over the last few days, what does the church mean to me? Um, we always think about it as our Father's house. And I kind of take that to heart. And I really think about the church as when I come on Sunday morning, it's kind of like coming home. I get to see friends or family, and I see some other members of the congregation that may, may be multiple generations in the church. And Sunday morning is a time when we're all getting back together, similar to getting back together for the holidays. We gather around the piano, we sing not Christmas choir, Christmas uh, tunes every week, but we sing music every week. When we walk away from the church, I always have a sense of warmth, a, a sense of comfort that I perhaps didn't have when I first got to the church. It's a way that I clear my mind, I clear my soul, and I walk away more fulfilled than when I got here. That's, that's some of the things that I get out of the church, and I can go on for, for hours. Um, what do I give back? Um, obviously, being part of the congregation is helpful. The financial is helpful. I also work on the endowment committee. The endowment committee, again, I'm trying to relate. How do I relate my work on the endowment committee onto a personal note? You know, I help guide the endowment committee, which is a financial asset of the church, so that we're trying to do it in a prudent manner to maintain income and preserve capital and all that kind of fun stuff. I do a similar role for my mom, okay? So I really look at this and say, how am I relating to the church? It's very similar to how I'm relating to my own family, how I'm helping my mom, how I'm helping the church. Um, that's some of the ways that I give back. We've got Boy Scouts going on. We've got other things going on. Uh, but Pastor Terry does want to have a, a few minutes left for the sermon. So I want to leave it at that. But, but thank you for, uh, for allowing me to share. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. Church is family. And... We're all part of this greater family of life, but we're part of a, of a unique family in that we are part of the Community Church of Glen Rock. So thank you for sharing those, those, um, those thoughts with us this morning. Pray with me, please. Almighty God, Teach us the gospel that we may be obedient to your will. Empower us to proclaim it in word and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Scripture today is taken from Luke 12, verses 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will put down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, 
You have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have pre prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. <clears throat> The overall message of Luke today is pretty straightforward. Life is not about the abundance of personal things. The parable of the rich fool ends with Jesus saying, <clears throat> You fool! This very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. In other words, if you were to die today, what good are all the material possessions you made for yourself if you are not also rich towards God? But if we want to fully understand this passage, we need to dig a little deeper, explore it a little further. How are we rich towards God? By living the kind of life which, which God values, whether there's reward in it or whether there's not. It doesn't mean that God wants us all to have little or nothing, but it does mean living a life without greed, and taking care of our neighbors. When we do this, when we do this, then we are acting in a way that is rich towards God. We all must ask ourselves if our desires interfere with our personal relationship to God. Most people, if asked, will say, mm, no, I don't think so. That's because greed, greed conjures up images that are far removed from us. Pictures of gluttons and scrooges, robber barons, and the closet of Imelda's Marcos shoes. Greed, like most sins, is much more apparent in others than it is in ourselves. It's hard for us to believe that our need for security and desire for stability may in fact be rooted in self-indulgence. Our perspective is often seen in the context of, I don't need a lot in life. However, if we peel back another layer, we must examine the opposite of greed or generosity. What we do or do not do to take care of others can be a, a helpful indicator of how self-absorbed we have become in our own lives. And how we care for ourselves will often tell us a great deal about how generous we are towards others. So let's take a look at that for a moment. Each of us may have different ways of looking at generosity or the lack of it. But for myself, I am reminded of the difference between being a renter and being a homeowner. For many years, during my early theater days, I rented or subletted an, apart an apartment in New York. It was the way of life, especially for an actor living in the city. 
Later on, prior to moving to Saugerties, New York, I was also a homeowner with my wife, Jean. And I have to say that the two experiences could not have been more different. Living in an apartment, for me, for me, tended to bring out a sense of carelessness and a genuine lack of concern for others. I was only living there temporarily, so I made no efforts to get to know my neighbors, much less extend a hand in generosity. It was all about me and the survival of the fittest. I didn't see the harm with being isolated in a self-satisfying lifestyle. If I was going to be a successful actor, I reasoned, I needed to be focused. Calls went unanswered. And I became somewhat of a recluse who came out primarily for work. Loneliness was my neighbor, and there were times when I didn't even treat that neighbor so well. The epitome of this was all too apparent when there was a knock at my door six months after I moved into my first apartment. It was the woman next door who said she wanted to borrow some sugar. She said, I heard them renovating your apartment before you moved in. Did they do a good job? Do you mind if I come in and take a look? I let her in, sure. And her jaw dropped. Where's all your furniture, she asked. I don't have any, I said. But where do you sleep? Right over there on the floor. I've got a blanket and and a winter coat that I use for a pillow. the things we do when we're in our 20s. (laughs) By the end of the day, my apartment was furnished by neighbors that I had never met. My experience as an owner of a co-op was completely the opposite. I became very interested in my neighbors and eventually served for five years on the board of directors of the building. I was more than willing to donate my time to help others, so much so that my wife, Jean, felt like she was an executive assistant in a not-for-profit business. It was during this time that my friendships, not only in the building, but in the neighborhood and professionally, began to grow and grow and grow. There was no such thing as isolating myself for the sake of a career. The only thing that produced was a period of time when I was not fully living out my life. Ironically, but not surprisingly at all to me in hindsight, I was also finding a church home. For the first time in years, I was placing God's needs before my own. And no longer was my life being lived out on only one level. Suddenly, everything was becoming a, multi, a multi-dimensional kaleidoscope, a fantasia. All of life's fullness in relationships, work, and leisure, along with a richness towards God, were coming together at the same time, creating a breathtaking display of fireworks in my life. In today's text, Jesus teaches the disciples and us a lesson about those who live in abundance and those who have little. It's important to note a few things about the man at the center of the parable of the rich fool. The most obvious is that his focus is entirely self-centered. He doesn't ever see beyond himself and his own needs. When he is blessed with abundance, the thought never even crosses his mind to give some of it away. Instead of finding happiness and joy and giving and reaching out to others, he seeks to hoard and hold on to everything. 
His very intention is the exact opposite of what Christianity is all about. The other thing to note about the rich fool was that he never saw beyond this world. He planned to build bigger barns for storing his crops. His plans had everything to do with his earthly existence right here and now. Never did he consider, though, a life beyond this one. Jesus follows up today's text with advice for those having little. He warns against worry and closing off to the world. The person who shuts him or herself off will eventually wither away. It's only a matter of time before the door will be opened and reality needs to be faced. Life doesn't consist of the abundance of things we possess. The rich fool talks about my barns, my crops, my goods, my soul, I, 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 I. It's all about him. We are not blessed. We are not blessed by God to hoard our wealth to ourselves. We are blessed to be a blessing to others in our lives. And we are blessed to build the kingdom of God up. The more involved I became at my church and the more ways I found to give, the more my life began to grow in all different directions. The the domino effect was having an, an exponential impact on every aspect of my existence. Generosity and faith in God are the antidotes to the power of greed. The way to have the elusive happiness we seek is not by acquiring more things and building bigger barns. The one who trusts in God in all things, who believes that their life is worth more than than what they own, who sees life as a gift and genuinely looks for ways to give back, that person will have a rich life. There's only one source, and we mustn't place our trust anywhere else. During Stewardship Month, a great deal of focus is placed on making a personal commitment to the church. But it is important to remember that there are many ways that we can give back, aside from what we are able to do financially. God gives every one of us a gift that we can share with others. The life of this church is dependent upon the generous sharing of all those gifts. When we look for ways to extend our generosity, we need to remind ourselves that everything starts at home. That home is with God and with family. And this church is part of that family. Let us pray. Gracious and caring God, help us to be more giving of ourselves that we may find ways to do your work here in our world. For you are the charitable one. You are the giver of life. You are the holy one who lives and reigns forever. This morning's offering will now be received.
Gracious God, we lift up these offerings for your blessing. Accept them as a sign of our gratitude. May they be used to bring others to know the joy of giving in their lives. In your beautiful name we pray. Amen. Let us remember those on our prayer list and those who are not able to worship with us today. I also ask that you hold in your prayers all those affected by the flooding this past week in South Carolina. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. This morning as we enter into our moment of silence. I ask that you pray that your eyes will be opened to the gift that God wants you to share this day, this week, this life with the rest of the world. It may be something that you're already doing, and it's so great. Ask for God's blessing. It might be the unknown answer to that bigger question we've all asked ourselves at one time or another. What is my purpose in life? Open yourself up to the new possibilities in this moment. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Thank you for being with us, God. We pray that we might discover your will in our lives. Point us in the right direction. Show us the gift we were brought into this world to share with others. Help us to recognize and be accepting of your gifts in our lives. We realize in this earthly existence, God, that often our desires and our greed can blind us to the true path you have set for us. Forgive us for those times when we place our own interests above yours. We know that the world we live in is a fragile world. Hatred, a hunger, homelessness, and a race to arms threaten the the peace and well-being of our world. Heavenly God, we pray, let faithful minds prevail. We know that there is no power greater than your love. Let that love be in each of our hearts. And may we share it with everyone we come into contact with as we go about our lives. Bless our town and the country as a whole as we struggle with these difficult economic times. We pray for the leaders of our nations. Guide them in bringing an end to the global problems that plague our world as a result of greed and carelessness. And now, God, we pray that you will bless the individuals, families, and loved ones on our prayer list as well as those who remain unmentioned but etched in our hearts. We ask these things through the prayer your Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. May Almighty God bless you and keep you in God's arms as you leave here today to share the gift of the Lord. Amen. One is good enough for now, but I love it. Hey, Kara, how you doing? Good to see you. I'm doing good. I'm supposed to be like this. <laughs> 